Hey guys, this is Max and today I want to review a legendary lens for you that had been originally introduced in 1968. And I'm talking about the Minolta MC 58mm f1.2 lens. And back then in the late 1960s and early 1970s, there was a battle going on between all sorts of manufacturers for the fastest prime lens for 35mm cameras. So cameras that today we would call um, full frame digital sensor cameras. And of course, uh, the winners of that battle eventually were Leica with the Leica Noctilux and also Canon with their um, F.95 lens. So even going a little bit beyond F1. And uh, part of this whole battle were also players like Nikon and Minolta. And the lens I'm talking about today was kind of the flagship lens that Minolta could come up with at the time. And it was really the result of advances in glass manufacturing at the Minolta factory and also the introduction of a new computer that was more like a room-sized computer <laughs> that helped um, calculate that particular lens design. Um, and as a portrait shooter, you can probably understand that I also I'm kind of drawn by the lure of really fast prime lenses and of course, most importantly, a creamy bouquet. And this particular lens, the reviews that I saw and that I read online prior to purchasing it kind of indicated that I should really take a look at it. And since I already own a Minolta X-T7 as an analog camera and also a Minolta MD adapter for my Leica T, my digital camera, um, I decided to go for it um, last Christmas and I kind of gave it myself as a present in this lens. It can be had for around um, 300 or 350 euros on eBay, sometimes going up a little bit higher. And in that particular case, I was just lucky I got a good deal. I uh, just sent someone a price suggestion via eBay and he responded back saying, yeah, that's fine, let's, let's do it. And now I'm the proud owner of one of these legendary lenses. And of course I took it out um, <laughs> and for for photo walks uh, around christmas and also um, the whole january basically and i wanted to share uh, some sample images that i took and also talk a little bit more about the characteristics of this lens um, right away i can say that um, when shot wide open and that of course is the most important thing for such a lens this lens is a little bit soft um, but already provides you with a lot of detail and the only thing that is not so nice is that in some situations, and we will see that in the sample images, um, the bouquet tends to have hard edges here and there. Once you stop down to F2, you get a beautiful creamy bouquet. And once you step down to, let's say, F from 5.6, around there, um, you get a lot of detail that makes this lens also perfectly suitable for a digital full-frame camera going up to, let's say, 36 megapixels. Um, so a really, really nice and interesting lens and rather affordable given that it is a really fast prime lens with f at f1.2. Um, so without further ado, let's head over to my desk and I will show you some sample images that I took mostly on film and uh, towards the end I will also show some digital images. So now let's take a look at some of the images that I took with this lens so far and I want to start with some street shots. This one I took uh, in Oldenburg around Christmas um, and it already gives you an idea of the kind of creamy bouquet that you can create with this lens when shot wide open. This was at f1.2 and at the same time you get a feeling for the kind of sharpness that you can achieve. As I said, it's a little bit soft when shot wide open, but at the same time, it does record a lot of detail here on the sharp part of the image in the right lower corner, this um, wooden part here. Um, I, I do also see that there is some glow in the plant on the right, but what I really like is the how it renders um, out of focus light sources uh, like the little yellow dots here and the lower left corner in the foreground. Another image I shot completely wide open um, that gives you a good idea of how it separates different layers 
in the image and again how creamy the bouquet can become this is basically shot um, into a store um, and this was uh, part of the window um, facing outside of the store um, with a little bit of decoration of course the focus is on this little figure here and then you have artificial light inside and um, uh, basically daylight outside by the way I should mention that I shot uh, this um, with my Minolta X-T7 on Fuji um, C200 because I just um, wanted to try this film a little bit more and I was really pleased with the results by the way here this image gives you an idea of the of how it renders colors um, especially on film and I basically shot this image because I found it interesting to see that the decoration of here on the here on the door kind of matched some of the pieces um, <laughs> that were used on the bicycles so the bicycle bell or um, the seat cover here and I also wanted to see how this bluish and yellow would render on this particular film um, yeah and again I like these out of focus areas here in the foreground you can already see the um like hints of what what would become chromatic aberrations that were, might potentially be difficult chromatic aberrations when shot in digital and um, here i think it's perfectly fine you do have a little bit of glow around these um, highlights in the foreground but that's fine here's another image um, that gives you an idea of how it looks like when it's shot wide open and you can see how completely separated this one in-focus item is from the rest of the image. Um, even the the other thing in the foreground kind of almost completely disappears and is enveloped in this <laughs> depth of field and this shallowness. Um, so it's really simple to separate things um, with 3D character um, using that particular lens here. Um, here an image um, Kind of going towards the infinity um, setting focus not completely to infinity but almost being a little bit further away and um, here what i found interesting is the kind of detail that it records in the sharp areas um, so that you can really get a feeling for the breaks and um, for how potentially this um, black part here in the foreground would feel when you touch it kind of walking down the uh, walking up the stairs um, but on the left side, at the same time, you can feel, um, get a feeling for the out of focus areas and um, how it renders there. Uh, kind of having a, a clear comparison between the two brick wall parts, um, the one in focus and the one other one out of focus. Um, here another image that gives you an idea of the kind of sharpness that you can get when shot wide open. I really like how sharp this one little part of the image is and how everything else is kind of swallowed by um, the by a large out of focus feel interestingly here you can see the kind of vignetting that uh, the that the lens produces when shot wide open so it is significant in my opinion um, but when used intentionally of course it doesn't um, yeah it's not a problem at all um, here an image that I shot uh, through a storefront window and they had a, like a an interior design store or whatever it was uh, that also gives you an idea of how you can play with the out of focus um, elements of the image especially with such a fast prime lens um, here I also liked how it rendered the colors um, and the kind of softness it created Um, and here one more image and then I let you go <laughs> with respect to the really incredible sharpness that you can get at one particular part of the image and then everything else kind of uh, not dreamlike but really feels uh, completely out of focus and in flow and in motion so to speak. Um, what I don't like so much about this image and you can see that here on the left part of the front wheel um are the the really busy bouquet um depending on what your background looks like and here you get an idea of how it could potentially look like and that you get a little hints of hard edges and there will be another example in a minute 
that is much stronger. So here's another image I shot in Oldenburg. This one is on black and white film. This is Kodak T-Max. Um, and I like this image because of the quality or you get a feeling for the quality of the wood and the metal of this door and how it would feel and one particular section and in the other you can really feel okay this is out of focus and it's so interesting to see how regular the out of focus areas are rendered here um, so you don't have a lot of irregularities and you can see that because of the kind of pattern that's on that door and i really like that so here's another black and white image that I mostly wanted to show you because of the kinds of um, vignetting that you get uh, in this case. Mm. Um, not much else to say about this particular image. The next one is much more interesting because here we're talking about the kind of hard edges and irregularities in the bokeh that I mentioned in the introduction. Um, and you can also see when shooting street <laughs> how difficult it is to um, really get things in focus and how it would sometimes help to stop down a little bit. Um, and that, of course, is an obvious statement. But here I was focusing, of course, on the passenger of this traditional um, yeah, horse carriage. And um, here in the foreground, it would have been interesting to get a little bit more detail of, of her as well. And the background is really messy, in my opinion, um, because of, the, of, of how the lens rendered uh, all the light sources here in the background. The, not only artificial light sources, the little larger dots, um, but also, of course, the entire background that is uh, part sky and part um, like panorama of Munich. Um, and I don't like that so much. What I do like is, uh, again, the 3D separation that you get and the clear layering and how the eye is drawn towards the in-focus areas. This really works works out nicely with this particular lens. Here again, shot completely wide open and I got kind of lucky because I was actually only focusing on the horse, like the, the horse's nose and, nose and then the kid kind of reached out at that particular moment and I really liked the, this image. Um, and what I found interesting with respect to the lens is the kind of detail that it recorded in the sharp areas so that I can really feel the hair um, around the horse's nose here and all these kinds of details and also a little glove from the kid uh, you can actually feel the fiber you can see get an idea of the kind of fabric and I found that really impressive here um, uh, in my opinion a very similar effect I can get a good feeling of how this played 50 special <laughs> um, uh, would feel like um, but everything else kind of glowing and out of focus and uh, really beautifully rendered so much about the street shots i hope i didn't um <laughs> not didn't come up with too much i also wanted to show you two indoor shots um before i go over to portraits um both were taken in oldenburg uh, at a cafe um, that i visited together with my girlfriend katarina and we just uh, took two or three indoor shots uh, in really low light situations. This is on Ilford HP5. Mm. And I was really pleased to see that it actually works out to use this kind of lens in indoor situations. Um, because that's of course the perfect use case for it. If you don't have a lot of available light, uh, then to use such a fast prime lens. And here again, I think it works works out well uh, to to really see the focal plane, and um, that even the parts on the right side that are still kind of on the same on the focal plane um, are sharp enough. I would say so. You you don't get such a strong fall off uh, in terms of corner sharpness as you would expect with such a lens, uh, at least in my opinion, and I had some good experiences there. Um, but again, the out of focus areas and also the background um, feel really nice and the foreground here. And one more example, um, basically going in a similar direction. Um, I basically shot it to give you an idea of how would it feel like the parts that are a little bit are in the foreground and then 
these um, only a step like five or ten centimeters um, a little bit back from there further back and uh, you can clearly see the 3d separation between the parts and uh, kind of the effects of the lens uh, setting in already yeah i really like that then let's head over to portraits because of course that is the primary use case for such a fast prime lens um, as well um, and here basically at the same cafe i took an image of my girlfriend drinking um, a cup of tea in this case mm. and of course her eyes completely in focus and um, everything else around it uh, out of focus here her ring here in the foreground and the little dots of lights it creates the, the kind of ring of light in the background i really really like that and he here i get the feeling that this is the kind of uh, exceptional result that you can get with such a lens um, but I have to mention it is incredibly hard to focus and to get images like that correctly. So I took about three images of her and this one was the best one. Um, one of it was a little bit out of focus and the other one just wasn't so nice. Um, so it is difficult. And here we also, <laughs> she also took an, an image of me. And here you can see that it is not completely in focus and not my eyes are in focus. And of course they're a little bit too dark here as well in terms of exposure. And what I found interesting here is um, what it does to the light dots on the right and uh, how you can see um, their form and uh, the rather hard edges and everything. But what I like about the image is that you get a feeling of how out of focus my, um, my clothes are already are, while at the same time you get a feeling for the texture and how it would feel. And here the details in my skin, like the little wrinkles around my eyes, I mean, I'm getting older after all, um, you can really feel that and that is on film, right? This is shot on HP5 and you still get this kind of detail. And here I'm, I'm now showing you a couple of images uh, that should give you an idea how difficult it is or what it means to shoot such a lens at f1.2 shoot it completely wide open uh, during a portrait session where you do have a subject that might potentially move a little bit. And here I only caught her hair in focus, I still like the image, but <laughs> you know what I mean. And here um, I kind of hit focus um, on her eyelashes. And you get this really dreamy in motion atmosphere. She And that is interesting here because she feels much more in motion than she was actually, than she actually was just because of this kind of shallow depth of field that is surrounding her. Um, then here another image, similar direction. Here again, um, really nice also what happens to the background. Here another one. And one final one that is a little bit out of focus. Um, and I think not her eyes are completely in focus, but one part of her eyelashes <laughs> and her hair, you can see that on the left is in focus so i misfocused a little bit but i still like the image so <laughs> don't expect to um get it completely right and i also wanted to show you uh, two digital or a couple of digital photos um shot on the leica t and i should mention here of course that the leica t is not a full frame camera but in, uh, but features an aps-c sensor so it does not cover the entire um, what the, what the lens uh, potentially records as a 35 millimeter or full frame lens. Um, and here I, these were the, one of the first test shots that I took with this new lens uh, uh, and basically took some time, positioned my girlfriend on our bed uh, next door in the bedroom and uh, took some time focusing and here you can really get an idea of how it looks on a digital sense of the kind of detail that you can record and the kind of sharpness that you can get uh, while at the same time again the idea similar to what i said earlier what happens to the clothes and the fabric of the clothes and while you can still feel it it's beautifully out of focus and i really like how this feels here um, yeah similar example um, her eye completely in focus uh, and the rest out of focus, blurry. Yeah. One more. So if you're aiming for sensual 
images uh, like this one here um, this is the perfect lens to go for in my opinion so i hope you enjoyed this review of this legendary lens um, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below if you have any suggestions on how to improve um, for future lens reviews um, if you like this video please also remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends if you want to see more videos like that please subscribe to my channel i really appreciate it so um, i hope to see you soon thank you very much for watching bye